we only have real direct evidence of effective screening for a few cancer types. Um, I mean, cervical cancer for sure, but we could also like hopefully eradicate cervical cancer by getting everybody vaccinated. HPV vaccine. Um, yeah. Eventually, exactly. Um, but but cervical cancer screening, um, you know, uh, absent a vaccine is is quite effective. So um, so that's one. Breast cancer for sure. We can cut the risk of breast cancer death by about a third um, with mammography. But that's not that's not a very inspiring number. I mean, I absolutely would suggest that everyone who's eligible who you care about, you should, um, you know, strongly insist that they get mammograms. Colonoscopy um, and other less invasive means of detecting colon cancer can reduce risk of colon cancer death by about 25 to 30% ballpark. I mean, the, the, best, the most optimistic estimates would be about a third um, also. Um, and I, there again, I'd say, well, that's that's a real number. I mean, I, you know, I, I've had my first colonoscopy and I'll keep doing them, uh, but that's not, that that isn't, you know, um, Again, particularly inspiring, and despite you know lots of effort and uh, let's say lots of controversy, prostate cancer screening is is really quite poor. I mean, really, it's like kind of a, it's a, it's almost like just you know um, non-randomly assigning people to get prostate biopsies, right? As you know, getting PSA tests basically. It's 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 not a great way of detecting. Um, cancers and certainly not potentially dangerous prostate cancers. But I would add something to that, Keith, which is that all of those three, the three last ones, which are three big cancers, right? Those are three yep. of your big yep. five. Um, yep. They all have something in common. So if you look at mammography, infrequent colonoscopy, and PSA, I would make a case that all of those are not great screens by themselves. Yep. And I'm sure you would agree, right? So in other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. People often confuse, and unfortunately this is true of physicians and policymakers more than it is patients, because I think the patients are looking to those of us who think about this for input. Patients yeah. confuse, or policymakers rather, and physicians confuse the statistics you rattled off as proof positive that early screening doesn't justify the cost. Yeah, A different yeah. way to say it is, no, mammography used in isolation, which has its blind spots is not a monotherapy. Yep. PSA by itself, as you said, is shy of a random number generator. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that adding ultrasound or MRI to right. the breast right. surveillance program won't right. dramatically by stacking tests with different sensitivities and specificities, right? Mm -hmm. Mammography, exceptional for small calcified lesions, uh, works poorly in hyperglandular tissue, right? The exact opposite is true with the MRI. Uh, similarly, with the PSA by itself, virtually meaningless, but PSA density, PSA velocity now adds much more uh, specificity. Yes. Uh, furthermore, you start to add things like a 4K, and if the risk is high enough, you get um, you know, a multi-parametric MRI. I'll, t I'll tell you this, Keith, I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I think, again, just for listeners, in 10 years, I have not had one patient get a prostate biopsy that wasn't warranted. And I'm, I'm not a superstar. It's not like I've, I've got some, right, no, right, right, right. it's just that just, we're, yeah. we're doing yeah. this. We're not just using PSA, right? Yep. Sometimes we've had patients who only get picked up on PSA velocity. Their PSA is not high mm -hmm. enough to trigger the 4K. Mm -hmm. No one would go and do anything based on their, you know, so, so I, I think I get a little frustrated when the medical community that's anti-early screening or, or screening and early detection poo-poos it based on what I still think are impressive numbers, the number you, you state, because yeah. that's sort of like saying, you know, um, you know, there's too many fatalities in cars we shouldn't drive. Right. It's, it's just it just doesn't right. make any sense right. it's like yeah there right. are fatalities right. in driving right. let's figure out ways right. to drive better you can put right. a seat belt on you could not right. drink while driving and right. you could mind the speed limit that's a totally different situation than saying it's you know we're going to abandon all those things so um yeah. anyway th this oh, is no, why no, i no, think I, I, yeah yeah, yeah. You're you know, you're reminding me that i like in my world uh you know being an oncologist i like i don't have to contend with that the community you're referring to. That's right. right? So, I mean, I, I take those numbers as being uh, like absolute support and endorsement. But part of what I'm getting at is the remaining unmet need, yeah. right? And it, and it's into that massive unmet need that there has been just an enormous advance in terms of methods for detecting like, you know, single alleles, uh, single uh, fragments of genes um, in the bloodstream. 
Uh, so it turns out that, that normal cells shed DNA um, in, the, in the bloodstream. Uh, it is digested and broken down you know, reasonably quickly, uh, but not immediately. Um, cancer cells do this also, uh, as it turns out. Um, and the more cancer you have in your body, of course, the, the more, um, well, maybe, maybe that's not so obvious, but it is true uh, that the more cancer that is in the body, the, the more um, of the copies of cancer DNA that will actually be shed in the bloodstream. But sequencing technologies have advanced um, to a degree that now, you know, from a single 10 milliliter tube of blood, and particularly one collected over time, so kind of analogous to your, PS, your uh, PSA velocity example, where you're sampling at multiple time points. If you sample at multiple time points now and subject those, um, I don't mean just to the methods that are you know being early or, or you know are being commercialized now, but but are being commercialized. I mean, since we talked four years ago, what what felt like you know very much a research method is now emerging as a a real clinical option. There's methods now that can find cancers at at an, at an earlier point and a broad array of cancers, like way beyond just the, the cancer types that we're talking about. I mean, the ones for which we have screening methods, I mean. Um, so really, kind of, you know, almost pan-cancer tests. But in R&D mode right behind them are, you know, 10x, 100x more sensitive methods that are, are absolutely going to move the needle in terms of our ability to find cancers um, at a microscopic point. Um, now, here's the problem. Uh, so the, the problem is, at a microscopic point, uh, right, what do you do? I mean, right, you, where do you direct the scalpel? I mean, this is, this is a fundamental conundrum. So you overlay on top of what I just described the fact that on that on the circulating tumor DNA, um, as it's called, you can actually do more than just sequence, you know, for mutations to find that it's circulating tumor DNA as opposed to normal DNA. You can also look at what are called methylation patterns, which is it has to do with this kind of like folding and unfolding of the blueprint. Um, these these molecular modifications that 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 exist in certain cell types. Um, and basically, if you find you know a mutated sequence of DNA, and it's got the methylation pattern of a colon epithelial cell, guess what cancer you probably have, right? So, so and that, and while you can't direct the scalpel right away, obviously you can do a colonoscopy. Um, but similarly for you know breast cancers and others, where you can then start to focus your attention right with with imaging analysis to try to you know detect the cancer, or maybe not the moment that the blood test is positive. Maybe it's going to take you six months, twelve months, eighteen months of continued surveillance, and then you'll find it at a much earlier point than you ever would have found it, you know, based on our other methods. Um, so that's one, you know, sort of paradigm. And that, that's where we are right now with the adoption, early adoption of, you know, uh, methods as they exist now that are getting rapidly better in terms of increased sensitivity. So there's been a real explosion in terms of investment in this area and now um, scale up of technologies that are, you know, commercially relevant. Um, but the other concept I wanted to just kind of weave in here is, I think, where you kind of started this um, set of questions, which is that basically, you know, in certain instances, we're going to find, you know, targetable mutations. And, you know, and by that, I mean with, you know, drugs or with immunotherapies, where basically, you know, we'd say, well, look, we can't, we see it in the blood. We actually, with our best available scanning technology, we can't actually see it in a way to direct a scalpel, but we actually know what drug to give you to eradicate your trivial amount of cancer, um, right? You know, using the analogy that we, we started with here, which is like a clinically overt metastatic disease versus, you know, microscopic disease that remains after surgery, the AKA adjuvant setting. Um, but now finding cancer is at a point where there's many fewer of these cells and where, you know, the defense mechanisms of force fields, the heterogeneity that we talked about before don't exist. And so this is, I mean, a real reason for optimism. I should just highlight that there's two applications here. Um, one is actually to do um, much more precise therapy in the post-surgical setting. So really figuring out, you know, right after surgery, who still has microscopic disease in them, who doesn't. Now, that, that's a much easier problem. I mean, I, I actually yes. talked with Max yes. Dean about that problem, and yes. he's one of the pioneers in that field. And of course, yes. right. not to minimize the, 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 the amazing breakthroughs there, but there you know what you're looking for, right? You've taken That's out right. the patient's lung cancer. Precisely. You know exactly yeah. how that lung cancer differs from a non-cancer lung cell, and you're out there looking, and you're right. I mean, this now becomes the most elegant way for uh, post-treatment surveillance. But yeah, exactly. it's, it's what we started with that is the much more difficult problem, and frankly, the most important problem. I mean, yeah. if you solve That's this right. problem, I, I don't know that the other things matter anymore, right? Oh, like no, if, no, you solve, if you solve if you solve this problem, yeah. you 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 win the game. Yeah.